Holy flippity flip flop flap and smokes everyone. We are witnessing right now the biggest geopolitical event in the past 50 years. Saudi Arabia will not be re-signing their deal with the US for the US petrodollar that's been going on for the past 50 years. This is going to lead to massive consequences for the US dollar and the global superpowers around the world are starting to shift. At the same time, we are seeing the calm before the storm in the markets and we also have a leaked report from regulators to say how fragile the big four US banks really are. So everyone, this is going to be a very action-packed episode. I've got huge updates to give you of what's been happening over the past week. So you know what time it is. Let's get straight into the news, the facts, and the data. Okay, well, first things first, before I go into what's happening with Saudi Arabia, we need to look what's happening in the stock market because people, I think we're in the calm before the storm before something really pops off. So the stock market is in its longest stretch without a 2% sell-off since the financial crisis. This kind of uh, non-volatility is not normal, and I think we will see something pop off very, very soon. Not only that, but look at this. Regulators find weakness in living wills from Bofast City, Goldman, and JP Morgan. But I'll get into that after I talk about what's happening with Saudi Arabia, but people, it is not good. Okay, so this is the most important story I've covered so far this year. Saudi Arabia shocks the world after abandoning the dollar, and here are the consequences. Because people, there will be massive, massive consequences for this, and you're definitely going to want to prepare right now, and I'll tell you how later in the video. So the agreement reached 50 years ago required Saudi Arabia and other oil-producing countries to sell their oil in US dollars thereby strengthening the greenback status as a world reserve currency and supporting America's economic stability. Nevertheless, this move by Saudi Arabia suggests a change in the direction of promoting multipolarity in world currency markets. So that's exactly right, everyone. We all know that all these uh, oil-producing nations have been forced to sell their oil in US dollars. This has created huge demand for the US dollar and the reason why the Federal Reserve has been able to print huge amounts of money, trillions and trillions of dollars. Yes, we have seen big inflation and very high inflation, much higher than they're reporting, but this is why the US has been able to print so much money without creating hyperinflation. But if they lose their world reserve currency status, which will happen every single major uh, super economic power in the world has lasted around 100 years and then eventually they do lose world reserve currency status, we're going to see the US dollar hyperinflate like you've never seen before. So like it says here, there is significant implications. First, it could reduce the demand for US dollar worldwide, especially in relation to oil transactions. Thus, it will weaken its value in international markets, challenging its role as the world's dominant reserve currency. This could increase the importance of some alternative currencies, such as the euro or the Iran, in global trade settlements. And we already are seeing uh, Saudi Arabia do uh, deals with China to do more trade in the yuan. It is also possible that some sectors of the US economy will be negatively affected. The energy sector, which is highly dependent on petrodollar flows, may experience changes related to oil pricing, thereby affecting revenue levels and profitability margins. In addition, reduced global appetite for the dollar could affect demand for US financial assets. Again, like what we're seeing with the stock market, this could cause some kind of uh, black swan event. This could affect interest rates and investment flows. We could see bond yield spike. Domestically, a weaker US dollar could rise commodity prices and thus reduce consumer purchasing power in addition to changing the terms of trade. So we see there what will happen. It will increase commodity prices, which I'll get into later in the video. But people, this isn't just Saudi Arabia. We're seeing a huge shift, like it says here, around the entire world. Globally, Saudi Arabia actions are consistent with broader trends of regional dominance of national currencies, favoring the use of currencies such as the euro and yuan in international transactions while supporting a multi-currency operation regime. So I know what you're thinking, well, okay, what does this simply mean? Well, this means there's going to be major geopolitical and economic shifts happening this year. It brings uncertainty to the global energy markets and currency markets, and it also means that the finance and trade will get very, very complicated as well. So policy makers and market participants alike will have to closely monitor if there's going to be any retaliation to this uh, from the US. Now, again, going back to this story, everyone, and tying it all together, at the same time the US dollar is weakening, the US banking system is weakening. So regulators find weakness in living wills from Bofa, City, Goldman, and JP Morgan. 
So what exactly did they find? Well, regulators found weakness in living walls submitted by four of the country's largest banks, detailing how the lenders would wind themselves down if something catastrophic were to happen. And people with what's going on in the derivatives market right now, I think this is just a matter of time. The Federal Reserve and Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation determined that there was a shortcoming in plans submitted in 2023 by JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup. In this report, sent to regulators, the banks must tell regulators by September how they plan to fix their weaknesses, and they must address the shortcomings in their next resolution plan by July 1st, 2025. So time is running out. Now, for some of you wondering, well, okay, what are these living wells? These are all connected to what happened after the great financial crisis. So living wills emerge in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis when a housing meltdown and unraveling of Lehman Brothers triggered a chaos across the financial system. Taxpayer bailouts for giant financial institutions and a cascading series of bank failures. And guess what, people? They're not prepared again. The Dodd-Frank legislation passed in 2010 made it a requirement for banks of a certain size to put together these plans on a regular basis showing how they could be wound down in the event of a crisis without putting the greater financial system at risk. And so what is the biggest risk of all? The derivatives market. Because look at this, everyone. The three Wall Street mega banks hold around 150 trillion in derivatives when there's only about... 18 trillion 17 trillion dollars worth of deposits so if this derivatives market explodes or something happens in this derivatives market there's not going to be enough cash in a system there is much more derivatives than there is real assets in the world and we would see a massive meltdown so i know what you're thinking well okay what can we do to protect ourselves if the us dollar does fall well you want to own assets that go up when the us dollar goes down and that is assets like commodities but also you can have more speculative parts of your portfolio like uranium that go up much higher much faster in a hyperinflationary environment now that's the end of the news segment of today's video and i now want to talk about today's video sponsor Ather energy that's stock ticker symbol s-a-s-k-f because Ather energy is a company that has a unique position in the uranium exploration space and i think you'll find this information very intriguing so why is Ather Energy Corp considered one of the best uranium companies on the planet? Well, let's break it down. First off, if you're looking to get into uranium, Ather Energy is the only company you need. Why? Because the uranium market is in a bull run right now. With the US banning imports from Russia, 15% of global supply is cut off while demand continues to grow. Now let's talk about Ather's incredible land position. They have the largest uranium exploration portfolio in Canada covering over 8 million acres across the Athabasca Basin, the Long Basin, and Central Mineral Belt. This is the most amount of land owned by any uranium company and includes some of the highest grade uranium districts in the world. Now, Ather Energy Corp is not just sitting on this land, they're actively exploring and expanding their resources. They recently raised 45 million US dollars in April, bringing their total cash reserves to an impressive 45 million. This strong financial position fully funds their exploration activities, making them the most cash-rich uranium company under a 200 million market cap. The company is led by an exceptional team. Troy Boyce Jolly, the CEO, has a track record of discovering massive uranium deposits. He previously found 170 million pounds of uranium at NextGen Energy, a company that saw a 3,000% increase in value. With such experienced leadership, Ather is poised for significant discoveries ahead. Now, Ather assets are also impressive. They have a historical resource estimate of over 43 million pounds of uranium oxide at the Anglergak project. This is one of the highest grade uranium deposits outside the Athabasca Basin. Their strategy is to continue drilling to understand the size of the deposit and to eventually develop it into a fully operational mine. They're also starting a massive drilling program on June 25th that is, tomorrow that is, uh, targeting the Engelgak and Gemini projects. This is where the most value as a shareholder can be realized. They're spending $22 million to make new discoveries, which is significantly higher than your typical exploration budgets. Atha also holds significant land positions in the Thelone Basin, which is considered similar to the Athabasca Basin 50 years ago. 
They own the largest land position here after a strategic acquisition, making them a major player in this promising region. The macroeconomic factors also favor Atha. With the US only having five uranium mines, there's a clear supply gap. Atha's vast and high-grade resource position them perfectly to fill this gap, potentially driving significant value. So in summary, Atha Energy, again, that's talk ticker symbol S-A-S-K-F, offers a unique blend of significant land holdings, financial strength, experienced leadership, and strategic approach to exploration. They are positioned to potentially benefit from rising demand for uranium, making them a compelling opportunity in the market. As always, do your own due diligence and start researching today. But everyone, of course, what do you think about all this? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. You're awesome. I'll see you all in the next video.